Hello everybody and welcome to part 6 of creating our Action Script 3 MP3 scroll view and click playlist player. It's XML configured. Let's take a look at what we have. This one we've added the graphic equalizer that jumps to the beat. Any song that's playing. We're getting creative now with it. And if you've never seen my beautiful face, here's me. Look how pretty I am. Now with the player you'll have equalizer. I have speakers on mine. Nice boombox speakers. Check them out. Now I'm going to show you how to make an equalizer sort of like this thing. I've already shown how to do the speakers and everything with the boombox tutorial. But now I'm going to show how to do a custom graphic equalizer like this one. And we're going to add it to this bad boy. Farts in the wind. Alrighty, let's open this FLA. This is one that we left off with part 5. Let's add to it. I'm going to, I'm on scene 1 here. See, I'm double click inside of the whole player, my whole player movie clip sitting right there. Double click inside. Now let's, uh, what are we going to do? We got to put a skin. Before we can put the EQ in, we got to put a skin. So let's put a layer at the bottom. Add new layer. Name it skin. Then, do any kind of design you want for your skin. I'm going to make one right now real quick. Okay, I have a skin that I'm happy with. And I'm going to, what it is is just a movie clip. Inside of it is a rectangle. And there's a filter effect on it. If you open this FLA, if you download my source files, you'll see what I have going on there. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take the list and position it somewhere where it seems like a good spot. I'm going to take the stop button and let's put that over here under that. And maybe we'll add some more controls like a play, maybe a play pause toggle type button and forward and back buttons. And the forward and back buttons will probably be the trickiest part of the application because they'll have to maneuver this list. Now, we have a lot of room here, see? A lot of room for graphic equalizer, for you to put thumbnails, whatever you want to do there. What I'm going to do is add graphic equalizer to this location. I'm a amplitude junkie. I'm going to make this a solid black and give it an edge of a light color so it looks like it stands out as a window there. Let's make that maybe 1.5 to give it nice smooth edge. See? It's beautiful. So that's the window that our EQ will display through. Okay, now what I'm going to do is make about 20 little bars to get this edge off completely and I'm gonna make these what color should we go with mm, I'll figure that out later right now I'm just gonna make them white no roundness and the height maybe four I don't know I might make the height different let's get that at even coordinates make sure the little window is and the skin so the skin is at coordinates 203.3 .3. I'm gonna put it at solid 203 solid 121 it doesn't matter where you have these things positioned in there, everything will work correctly. Okay, so there's one little bar. Control C, Control Shift. Well, let's make sure it's even coordinates first. I don't like those uneven coordinates. Control C, Control Shift V to paste in place, copy, paste in place. Let's give those a little separation there. That looks good. Then you can just go Control C, Control Shift V, keep moving them to where they're spaced apart correctly, or you can highlight all together if you think they're not spaced apart correctly, and go to Modify, Align, and distribute your heights. That will make all of them have the exact spacing they need. So I'm going to fill this up to however many it needs, and I'm going to try and land on 10 or 20, a good even number like that, 10 or 20 little bars. Alrighty, I decided to go with 10 bars, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yep, 10 bars, and they're spaced apart pretty good, 
That way, what I'm going to do is add some glow to this, to these effects, the graphic equalizer bars. So I don't want them exactly right on top of each other because when I add the glow, you might not see the separations that well, and I want to have distinct visual separations in all those bars. Now let's just take a look at this thing. Let's press Control Enter. It's pretty cool so far. It's looking good. Let's continue. So I'm going to highlight all of these bad boys. Don't highlight that window back there, just all those. I'm going to right click, convert to symbol. I'm going to call it bars. EQ bars. There you go. Movie clip, registration, top left is good. OK. Now we can duplicate that. Control C, Control Shift V, as many times as needed. Let's give those some space as well. Maybe we'll go with one, two, three, four, five, maybe. Or maybe there should be an even number. I don't even know. Let's go with six. Three for the right, three for the left channel. So we have three for the right channel, three for the left channel, and that's how we'll program it. Hey, look at that. They fit all in there perfectly. It would be a good idea at this point to separate the layer. So what we'll do is right above skin, insert layer, and call it EQ. Grab all of those EQ bar movie clips. All six of them. Control X. Go into the EQ layer. Control Shift V. Okay, now what we're going to do is double click inside of one of these bar EQ movie clips and we're going to adjust its inner timeline and since it's all the same movie clip, all six of these, if we adjust one all six would adhere to those changes. So let's go inside and you can see here we have all ten of those little bars. What we're going to do is make mm, Let's insert 10 keyframes. Let's go to insert keyframe. Well, that didn't work. Let's press F6. There's probably a way you can just insert keyframes automatically all the way through there, but I'm an idiot and I don't know how. And I'm sure a thousand of you are going to tell me. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, boy. What a moment. Okay, so what we'll do. <laughs> is we'll make sure that there's corresponding amount of bars for amount of frames. You can do this with 50 frames and 50 bars if you wanted, but that'd be a little extreme. Or you can make really thin bars, make a nice detailed one. So what I'm going to do is on each frame, I'm going to remove that many bars to where there's only that many showing corresponding to the, what frame number it's on to watch. There's only should be one on that frame. On this frame, there should only be two. On this frame, there should only be three. I'm going to do that all the way up. Okay, I'm all done setting it up. Look, that's what you have there. So frames one through ten, you have a nice bar that's going to go up and down. Let's insert a new layer right above. Go to that first keyframe there. Press F9 or open your actions panel by going to window actions type in stop action that is a stop action we do that so this thing just doesn't keep going on wild by itself and looping we want to control this timeline with the sound amplitude of the song playing so let's go back into my whole player clip and now we can program these things to be tied to the sound amplitude and make them have different heights that they will reach and be tied to different channels, the left and the right channel. And I think a smarter way to do it would be to put left channel, right channel, left channel, right channel, left channel, right channel. That way the bars won't be so even as they bump up and down. Okay, here's the important part is giving them instance names. And if you want, let's add the glow effect right now before we do that. Let's go to filters plus sign, let's put glow, I'm going to put a white glow on mine, let's make it high quality glow, 
or maybe medium. Now let's give them the instance names. So let's go to the properties section of the panel here. And the first one, let's say EQ bar left one. So let's just copy that. Let's make this one a left also. EQ bar left two. And this one would be a left as well. So EQ bar left three. Now this will be a right. EQ bar right and we're naming them left and right because that's the sound amplitude of that channel it's going to be listened to the left and right channel which have different amplitudes if the songs are set up right by the song creator which most are EQ bar right that should be one this one is EQ bar right two this one is EQ bar right three and that's it. Now they have instance names. Now we get to the code. Let's highlight frame 3 where the bulk of our application's code is. Go to the bottom. Hit enter. And here is the code. So I'm starting at line 53. Now watch how easy this is. So all we have is uh, 54 through 61. It doesn't even need to be that many really but it's only going to be powering two EQ bars at the moment. Let me explain the code to you and then I'll add the rest for the other EQ bars. It'll all make sense to you after I explain it. So what happens is we set an enter frame event and what that does is it sets gives you a way to loop code or animations over the time that the frame is accessed. So if we're running 30 frames per second each one of these frames will get hit 10 times a second, I do believe. So 10 times a second, this on into frame event is going to fire off. Now let's look at the code in action before I explain to you what's happening inside of the on into frame function that fires off on into frame event. So every 10 seconds, this code happens. I'm sorry. 10 times a second, this code happens, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm at 30 frames per second and there's three frames. So let's go to control enter, see what it does. Nice, huh? Exactly to the beat. Alrighty. Now what's driving that is you can see we put the instance name for the EQ bar that we want to power with the code go to and stop usually you see on a movie clip my movie clip go to and stop frame 3 so basically that's what I'm doing here but I'm just using code or math <clears throat> to get to the exact frame that I want I uh, multiply the left peak and the right peak by 10 because that's the amount of frames that's in my EQ bar see so when it's maxed out it'll go all the way up to 10 which it shows here. It's perfect. Now I'm going to set the rest up for the other four bars with four more lines here. Now I have all six of the lines that I need to power all six of those EQ bars and what I want to do, let's take a look at it and you'll see why there's a problem if you leave it exactly like this. I'm going to explain this math to you in just a second. Actually I'll explain it to you right now. What we're doing is saying math.round which is essentially rounding the number that we attain from taking the left channel peak and and multiplying it by 10. We're taking that number, left channel peak, multiplied by 10, and we're rounding it. That's all it's doing. So we're saying go to and stop, boom, and we're making it hit a certain frame number inside the movie clip. All right, so now let's take a look. You'll see that there's three sets of bars that are all the same jumping exactly the same which is not cool we want some variation in there so we can just adjust the math in that case all the movie clips can stay the same so let's say we want the the last two to be kinda high peaks and then let's make this one a seven let's make this one a 
I don't know, a 5. Make this one a 6. And this one an 8. And there, there's your variation. And you can set up a wave any way you want to to look like an actual equalizer wave. But I think that's cool. That's not bad. Maybe make this one go a little higher. But you can adjust those values to make them do whatever you want. Put this one 7 as well. And understand that the left and right peaks are different. So you can get a good bit of variation out of it. Alrighty, so that pretty much wraps it up for making the equalizer. You can see it looks pretty decent. It's operating well. It's nice and big on my player. You can make your player any size you need, any skin you need, any kind of buttons you want. We'll go a little bit further with this if you guys are interested. Let me know if you are.